So now let's go with uh, go through a taxic and the last part of your homework here. Uh, I think Shirley already kind of talked about a taxic in today's lecture. And uh, you know, a taxic is is an experiment tool to measure the open chromatin region, uh, the open chromatin region of our chromatin. So you know, our chromatin, our DNA is wrapped by histone protein, and maybe there will be some epigenetic modification that makes our uh, DNA and histone pack either tighter or maybe more open. And if they are more open, we can use TN5 transposes to insert, um, you know, PCR primers or some specific sequence that you want to insert there in, in those uh, open regions. And then, you know, we can do PCR amplifications of these reads. On the right figure, it's a demonstration of how a toxic pigs would look like. So uh, as we just mentioned, if, if some chromatin region is open, then you will see reads aligned there, right? And you will see pig like signals again. And to be honest, we don't know any information about TFs there. I mean, if it's open, it's more likely to bind to TF, uh, but like no one knows what's the actual TF binding there, right? Well, compared to ChIP-seq, we're directly pulling down um, a specific protein and see what's the DNA around it. So these two are like very different types of, um, you know, experiments. And there are some other measurements of chromatin accessibility you might heard about, like DNA-seq, 4C, and HiC, and 3C, and et cetera. Um, I think Shirley mentioned DNA-seq is not as good as a taxic, so most people switch off using a taxic now. Uh, you will hear more about high C, I believe, uh, in the next few weeks. It, it's just some other ways of measuring chromatin accessibility and maybe add, you know, chromatin chromatin scale. Okay. And here's like an overall pipeline of a taxic analysis. You know, just like any kind of sequencing data, we, we get the raw FASTQ file from sequencing companies and you need to do some QC check there. You need to align it. Uh, for ChIP-seq, we use BWA. For a taxic, you can also use BWA or other aligners and then do QC again. And then we, we can do peak calling uh, using, actually funnily, we can use uh, MACS here for, even for a taxic peak calling because they also follow um, the Poisson distribution. So you can still model these peaks by, by that mathematical model. Uh, but you know, all this previous step is already done by, um, by our side. So when you're starting with the homework questions, you already have the bad files, right? So, so you know, all this pre-analysis and core analysis, it's like done. And in your question 18, we're asking you to do like peak differential analysis, like downstream analysis after you have the peak regions, the bad files. And in question 19, we ask you to integrate it with um, ChIP-seq uh, analysis. So here is just, you know, showing uh, what's the pipeline and workflow would look like. Uh, okay, so now let's talk more about the homework questions. So in question 18, we ask you to use bad tools to find the pigs that are unique in tumor, but not in normal. So uh, if you still remember the functions I mentioned, there is, there is a sub-function called subtract, which can help you to find the difference between two region files, two bed files. And you know, uh, we feel that you know, since you already somehow used bad tools in previous question, maybe you can feel more confident of looking the documentation and then try to write your own command here. Uh, but again, if it's if you have some difficulty, let us know in Slack. Okay, and here we we are piping. So this this small vertical line is called pipe. We are piping your battle output to a new command, uh, and this command will cut the first three columns. Um, otherwise, some downstream part might give you some complaint. So, but but this part just means we are cutting the first three columns of your output from bad files. Okay, and then. This is like redirect the output of this command to your output for question 18, okay? And then after you get uh, this bad file, we're asking you to run system took it again. Uh, if you still remember it from last week lab, 
it contains a lot of public uh, chip seq data and it can help you to find once you provide it a bad file it can help you to find what are some other public data a sorry what are some other public data sets that has overlapping regions so you will know a list of tfs that's like enriched from this experiment okay without looking at motive and considering this is a taxic, you will know which TFs might be binding to those open regions uh, or DNA, okay? And then in question 19, <clears throat> uh, so now just take the top 10K ataxic peaks uh, by full change. I think, uh, sorry, I cannot exactly recall which file, but uh, I think it's probably in the file that we provide to you. It already contains um, the score, like, and also the full change in the original bad file that we are providing to you. So again, you can just, you know, reading this table in R and then choose the top 10K picks and then uh, use run system toolkit again. Um, and if you remember, the output of system toolkit would be some dynamic figure look like this, and then Compare just compare it with question 18, like which method might give you more meaningful results, right? Question 18 is asking you to find the differential peaks versus in tumor versus normal, while this one is tumor only. So, you know, like maybe give us your thoughts here. It's a free response again, okay? Mm. Okay. And here's like the very last question of our homework. It's back to ChIP-seq again, um, no longer relevant with a taxic. And let's talk more about LISA2 here. So actually I was about to explain how LISA2 work, but I think Shirley already mentioned the overall process at the very last part of today's lecture. So maybe just watch her videos if you're very interested in how LISA2 is working. Um, but essentially, we are just giving Lisa two a differential gene list, and in the end, it will return us what are some enriched uh, transcriptional factors um, after the analysis, right? And uh, just to let you know, um, the Lisa two is built based on public available ChIP-seq and DNA-seq data sets, and for both type of data, they're still modeling their RP as the exponential decay model we mentioned before, okay? So, but anyway, your input will be a list of gene and the output they give you will be a list of TFs that are think to be important and enriched uh, for these genes, uh, based on these genes, okay? So here is question 20 and um, please remember to use this exact environment, don't, Please do not install your own Lisa2, but really use this pre-installed uh, Lisa2. And then, um, I mean, we can also take a, do a look at Lisa2's documentation later, but for Lisa2, you can just input like HG38 is like our reference genome here and put your up-regulated gene list. Uh, again, it's a list of the names only. And then, you know, just, they will give you output of a list of transcriptional factors. Just take a screenshot of the final output file content, like those maybe top 10 TFs and their scores. And you know, if you're interested in, you can maybe try to simply search some literature about prostate cancer, because this, this gene list is upregulated genes in prostate cancer, right? And maybe you can search some prostate cancer literature and see what are some previously experimentally validated TF that are important and see if they match uh, Lisa2's output, okay? Um, so that's about Lisa2. And I think that's like the last question of our homework. Uh, we still have a lot of time, so I'll, I'll be answering uh, questions since then. Let me stop recording. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, and in the end, don't forget about the two bonus question. If you have time still, we encourage you to work on this. And okay, I think that's all for today. Feel free to leave, but if you have any question, I'll be here till around 